here at the Oklahoma City Zoo and Botanical Garden, and joining me today is the curator of horticulture, Lance Swearingen. Lance, Hi, good to see you again. Welcome to the zoo. Thank you. It's always a fun day to be at the zoo. Yes. You are the curator of horticulture here. Right. And you were a public horticulture major at OSU. Yes. So you've done a lot in your career. You actually interned at Disney World first. I'd like to start there. Disney was a great experience. Uh, working there in public horticulture gave me um, new knowledge and it was so amazing to work there. And how, what, how is that horticulture different than what you're doing here at the zoo? So working at Disney was a lot different than working at the zoo. Here we're more of a native botanical garden. Um, we're dealing with animal exhibits, fence lines. We provide animal brows. And so that's... What does that mean, animal brows? Okay, so animal brows are is anything from our botanical garden that we can cut and provide to the animal keepers. They give that to our animals and that accentuates their animal diet. So anything from elm, mulberry, hackberry, all those great native plants, we can cut right from the botanical garden and provide to our animal collection. So as a horticulturist and gardener, a lot of times we're worried about animals eating our plants, but you do it intentionally here. Yes, we do. And then we also have lots of protection for inside the exhibits. Uh, rock protection around trees keeps the uh, animals from clawing at the trees and trying to climb up them all the time. So, so. you didn't have those problems at Disney World. No, I didn't have those <laughs> problems at Disney World. So. And I think that's one of the exciting things about coming to the zoo here is you can also appreciate the plants that do well here in Oklahoma. So visitors can kind of take home some garden information as well. That's right. 90% of our botanical collection is Oklahoma native plants. Mm -hmm. So any you can come out and see some great plants that will do well in your garden at home. Um, and you can ask one of our horticulturists on staff. They'd be happy to give you that information. But lots of great natives out here that help us conserve water, do great throughout our hot summers. And as a curator, what are you guys doing behind the scenes? I mean, a lot of times we come for the animals, but there's a big horticulture component, which is important. And that's why you've introduced Botanical Garden into your, your main title, your right. name. So we are an accredited botanical garden. Um, we received accreditation through the Association or American Association of Museums back in 1998. We currently have over 5,000 accession plants and about 20 designated botanical collections. Um, so we're tagging, tracking, accessioning plant material in our botanical collection. Uh, we also have lots of collections that you don't see year round. So uh, spring and summer are a great time to come out and see our tropical collections that we bring out. Um, we store those in our greenhouses over winter. Mm -hmm. Those come out for display on grounds in our temperate season. And we just missed your zoo blooms. You had a huge uh, bulb exhibit out here. We did. And that'll be coming back next spring? That will be back next spring. Mm -hmm. Over 100,000 tulip bulbs blooming throughout all 120 acres of the gardens. Wow. It was beautiful. And bigger and better next year. It it will be bigger and better. <laughs> so what about some of the other events that you might have coming up? You've got something coming up for National Public Garden Day. Yeah, National Public Gardens Day is on May 12th, and that is a Friday. So kicking off National Public Gardens Day, uh, we're having our spring plant sale. Uh, we're having that run all through Mother's Day weekend. It's in our global plaza area, so no zoo admission is required to come to the plant sale, and that's 9 to 5. Uh, May 12th, 13th, and 14th. Okay, and where can people get more information about the zoo and just other events that might be coming up? Um, our guests can get more information about the zoo by coming to our website, okczoo.org. Okay, thank you so much, Lance. Thank you, Casey. Lance, a lot of people come to the zoo for the animals, but there's a lot of garden space here as well. And we're kind of actually in an animal exhibit though, the, not your typical one with fences and stuff. This is the butterfly garden here. Yeah, Casey, this is our butterfly garden. It's 22,000 square feet. It's our largest butterfly garden in Oklahoma. And all of these plants out here are specifically 
planted for our pollinators. Wow, it's just beautiful. So when you talk about a pollinator garden, there's a lot that goes into maintenance, um, maintaining it differently than what you would do some of your other gardens, especially insecticides and pesticides. That's right. Is this organic or? Yeah, so this garden is totally organic. So every weed out here is hand pulled. Uh, we don't use any Roundup or any spraying out here because that can be harmful to caterpillars and to all of our nice pollinators. So this garden is organic. Very good. And of course, most of the zoo is fairly organic because you practice IPM practices, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we, do, uh, we don't spray anything in exhibits. We use uh, organic spraying practices in our greenhouses and throughout all our gardens. Because you never know. And you've got a lot of kids running around here also. We sure do. So some of these plants, you know, they have different uh, purposes in this garden. Can you kind of explain some of those purposes? Sure. So every plant that is in this garden is specifically designed to attract our pollinators. So mm -hmm. butterflies, flies, moths, bees, and we have uh, host plants in this garden. And host plants are what butterflies, the caterpillars use as food and to lay their eggs on and build their chrysalis. And then we also have uh, nectar plants out here. Mm -hmm. So uh, the nectar plants give them the nice food that they need and um, lots of tree canopy in this area. Which is kind of critical. A lot of times we don't think about that. Right, yeah. So when it's raining hard and we have those Oklahoma winds blow through, those butterflies need a place to take cover. And they also need a drink every once in a while too. So we have a small puddling pool at the top of the garden where butterflies can stop and get a drink on those hot days. And that puddling pool is just a shallow, sandy basin area for them? Right, yeah. So just a saucer with sand in it that's wet. That's all they need. So anybody can make one of those for their pollinator garden, really. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, one of the beautiful plants behind us here is this, is it a salvia? Or? Yeah, so this is a salvia, and that is one of the nectar plants that we have here in the butterfly garden. And it is just gorgeous this time of year, and it is coming up all around us. You got any cool host plants you can show us? Yeah, we sure do. Okay. All right, Lance, so what are we looking at here? So this is another one of our host plants here in the butterfly garden. Mm -hmm. This is Aristolochia, and this is um, a host plant for the pipe vine swallowtail butterfly. And they, the, you'll come out here in the late summer and you'll see the, the black caterpillars on these and they're just munching away. So it's always critical to know which ones are host plants because these are supposed to have caterpillars eating right. on Right, yeah, so not all caterpillars are bad. Right. So <laughs> you want to keep some of those around, especially on your host plants. And it looks like you've got some fennel coming up through here too. Yeah, fennel is another great host plant for uh, butterflies. Uh, so that's a really easy one to grow in the garden and will help you attract lots of butterflies. Excellent, well thanks for sharing this. Sure. So Lance, we have a lot of Baptisia and Salvia blooming here. I'm sure this garden's constantly changing as most perennial gardens are. Yeah. You've got to provide that through the season, so for butterflies. That's right. So you always want to have something blooming uh, in a transition throughout the entire season. And any time of year that you come into the butterfly garden at the zoo, you can see something new and colorful and something that you might want to find uh, in your own garden center and take to your own home to attract butterflies and pollinators. Absolutely. Well, I encourage everybody to get out here, even though it might look a little different when they come visit, it's going to be beautiful nonetheless. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.